While many of us know that combat can be brutal and unforgiving, there are a few of us who have experienced just how much of a toll combat can exact on the human body and live to tell the tale. And yet, the near full cost of war would not detour, deter our next Beyond the Call awardee from his mission of helping his fellow veterans get beyond their injuries and experience the fullness of life. Retired United States Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills is a recalibrated warrior, a motivational speaker, an actor, an author, and an advocate for veterans and amputees. Despite losing portions of both arms and legs from an IED while on his third tour in Afghanistan with the 82nd Airborne Division, Travis continues to overcome life's challenges, breaking physical barriers, and defying odds. He is one of only five quadruple amputees from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to survive his injuries. In September 2013, Travis and his wife Kelsey founded the Travis Mills Foundation, a nonprofit organization formed to benefit and assist post-9-11 veterans who have been injured in active duty or as a result of their service to our nation. The veteran and their family receive an all-inclusive, all-expense-paid, barrier-free vacation to Maine, where they participate in adaptive activities, they bond with veteran families, and they enjoy much-needed rest and relaxation in Maine's great outdoors. Through his Travis Mills Group LLC, Travis consults with and speaks to companies and organizations nationwide, inspiring all to overcome life's challenges and adversities. As major news networks and media outlets have shared, and they continue to share his story, Travis's motto continues to ring through, never give up, never quit. It is an honor and privilege to present the 2022 VFW Beyond the Call Award Veteran Division for Public Service to retired Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills. Beyond the Call Award, Veteran Division, Public Service, and Citation, awarded to retired Staff Sergeant Travis F. Mills, and special recognition and sincere appreciation of his faithfulness, dedication, and support to his fellow veterans and his extraordinary service to the United States of America. Retired U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Travis Mills work as a motivational speaker, actor, author, and an advocate for veterans and amputees has become a symbol of hope and perseverance to millions of Americans. Through his foundation, Travis has helped wounded, ill, and injured veterans get a new lease on life and reconnect with their families in a new and meaningful way. Through his many speaking engagements, Travis inspires countless others to overcome life's challenges and adversity by living out his motto, never give up, never quit. Travis continues to remind everyone that physical barriers will never define one's spirit and this has justly earned him the utmost respect and appreciation of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and the official seal of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States this 20th day of July, 2022, approved by the National Council of Administration Signed by Matthew Fritz Mahelchik, Commander-in-Chief, and Kevin Jones, 
Adjutant General. All right, thank you guys. All right, so I got about four hours to get through. So uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to be here. Um, thanks so much for this honor. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I get nervous in front of everybody because I'm always like, oh, I hope I don't bomb this, <laughs> you know. Because last time, you know, you got, you got it. No. Um, I see a lot of people checking my legs out, so I should let the ladies know I am married. It's just not, she's a jealous type. Uh, I'm from a very small town from Michigan, and I grew up there. I went to college and found out I wasn't really a big fan of college, you know, so my girlfriend back home convinced me to move back home, so I did that, and then I met her boyfriend, Colin, by accident. <laughs> and then I joined the military because of it, so when I look back in my life, I'm like, how'd this happen? How to lose my arms and legs? <laughs> it's, it's her fault. Thought you guys should. Thought you guys should know that right off the top. Um, no, uh, I, I was proud. I went to the, the service and I, I, you know, enlisted with the uh, army. Uh, I went ahead. Yep, yep. And I'll tell you what got me. Right here's what got me. I mean, obviously the Taliban got me, but before that. I just wanted early retirement. I just walked into it, to be honest. Now, it's kind of a sad story. My last job, I was cut off at the knees. Um, but <laughs> I fell apart at 25. It's crazy. I got these for days, by the way. But uh, in truth, in truth, uh, I was between the Marines and the Army, and this Marine recruiter was going hard. You know, I was like, what's, you know, what's going on here? And he's like, you want to be a Marine? And I was like, I don't know. You know. <laughs> And then this army guy was like, you want $24,000 signing bonus? And I was like, I, I do. <laughs> but I said, hold that thought. And I went back to that Marine's office and said, what's your signing bonus? And he stood up and he puffed his chest out all proud. And he goes, honor, duty, respect. And I was like, awesome. But I'm talking cash money here, <laughs> you know. And he's like, there's no money here. And I'm like, what idiot would join that branch of service? <laughs> it's the Marines. So... If you don't tell them my jokes, they don't get them. So don't worry, I'm not offending anybody. But ladies and gentlemen, I was called to service my whole life, to be honest. Uh, I was a captain of the football, baseball, and basketball teams. And part of being a captain in my small little town in Michigan was to do community service. And then I was uh, able to go play college football for a little bit. And I played this new position. I was really good at it because in high school, I was a... Uh, fullback and linebacker, kicker even, and punter. And in college, I played the sideline, you know, and I was crazy good at it, though, to be honest, because I was there all season. Sad. And then I thought I can do better and I can be better and I, I want to do more, and I went and decided to join the Army and became part of the famed and historic 82nd Airborne Division. There it is. And uh, I deployed three times. My first one was 15 months, and then I came back and got married to my wonderful wife, Kelsey. My second one, I was gone for a year, and my third one, I left behind my four-month-old daughter and my, my wonderful wife at our house in North Carolina. I had just been promoted to staff sergeant, and I was a weapons squad leader. And we went overseas, and I had orders to take me to Fort Hood, Texas. Big Army said, take this one off, and I said, no, thank you. I got guys that believe in me, that serve under me, that are my brothers in arms. And my wife understood the calling and understood all of it. So I deployed for my third time for a nine-month deployment. And it just so happens I set my backpack down on a bomb. And I lost portions of both arms and both legs. I recovered at Walter Reed for 19 months as one of only five surviving quadruple amputees. I told my wife she should leave me in the initial days because I didn't think I had much to give. I didn't think she wanted to be with me, or she should be with me, because I was just going to be a burden. My daughter was six months old at the time, and my wife got offended at the notion of me telling her she should go. So she stayed, and she let me know the biggest reason was she was excited for handicapped parking. So, 
So through those 19 months, I had to relearn how to use a hand that's a prosthetic. I got cool tricks, like that doesn't hurt. you think it would, but it don't. <laughs> I can do this too. I learned how to feed myself again, dress myself again, embarrassingly enough, use a restroom by myself again. I got back on my feet because of the doctors and the nurses and the therapists and the wonderful staff at Walter Reed, the medics that believed that my life mattered, that worked on me when I told them to leave me on the battlefield and save my guys, the helicopter medics that worked on me, and then the 14 hours of surgery initially I went through in Kandahar to keep me alive. While I was at Walter Reed learning all this, I realized two things very early on. Number one, don't dwell on what happened. Just reminisce it. There was nothing going to change the fact that I had arms and legs missing. I would hope and I'd wish and I'd pray every day in that hospital bed to wake up from this nightmare. But every time I opened my eyes, I was right there and I learned Stop dwelling on the past. You'll never change it. And just keep pushing forward to a better future. And ladies and gentlemen, I also learned that my, no matter what my situation is, I'm in control of my attitude. I have no arms and legs, but I was there with my wife and my daughter, my family. My father-in-law is here today. He travels with me everywhere around this great nation of ours because he's my right-hand man. Because <laughs> I forgot mine. And while I was at Walter Reed, I wanted to give back and do better. I wanted to have my new, my new way of serving because I lost mine. I was no longer Staff Sergeant Travis Mills, leader of combat soldiers. So we decided that we were going to start a nonprofit to give back to veterans. We started modest. It was going to be just care packages. And we did that, $5,000 from Kelsey and I, and we did that. And then we thought we can do more. So we bought an old estate up in Maine where my wife's from. It's a real funny story. I'm from Michigan, she's from Maine. And when we got out of the hospital, I said, hey, let's go to Michigan. And she said, no. I said it one more time and she took my arm off <laughs> and she hit me with it. And she said, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. So we moved to Maine. And uh, we went ahead and decided to bring some families out and see if it would work. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to get too long-winded on you, but if we fast forward to today, we have a $2.5 million operating budget. We have brought over 800 families to the great state of Maine to have this rest and relaxation, plus show them to never live life on the sidelines, to always be active in their family and always be active in their community. They come out and they get to try new things. We have dads that never rode a bike with their children, that break down and cry when they get the chance to do it on a hand cycle. We have spouses that say they've never seen their loved one act like this since before, you know, the person they married since before they deployed. And it's been four years since their injury and now they're back to their normal. And kids cry saying it's better than Disney World. And again, in the true fashion of we can always do more, be better and do better, we have a post-traumatic stress program that we started for all veterans that have been through combat or first responders. We partner with Warrior Path Foundation, or Warrior Path Program, which is out of Boulder Crest Foundation in Virginia. The promise that I make is that I'll never take a dime for this work. I'm very fortunate to be successful in businesses elsewhere. But I will keep giving back and doing everything I can. It's truly an honor to be here with you. I can't thank you enough for your service to this wonderful nation and allowing me to be part of the brotherhood and sisterhood that comes along with it. I want you guys to know that I don't think I need to be put on a pedestal because of my injuries. I did not serve any more than anybody else. So if you did serve, which I know you guys did because that's why we're here, <laughs> Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, Army, and yes, those well-dressed, wonderful-looking Marines, <laughs> thank you for your service. And guys, I appreciate this honor, and I'm just grateful to be here with you. So I hope you guys have a great conference. I'll be around for a little bit. If you guys can't figure out if it's me, I got no arms and legs. So. And in closing, don't feel embarrassed to ask me anything. And let me just start you off in case you guys want to ask me questions if you see me in the hallway. I still got it. <laughs> it still works. And I named my son after it. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Appreciate it.